I'm very excited for this week because we are finally getting into copywriting, uh, specifically for radio commercials. If you're unfamiliar with the term copywriting, basically that's just uh, another word for the script. So uh, the script for a radio commercial, the script for a TV commercial, uh, even like the words in a blog or a social media post, those are all uh, referred to as copy. So this week you're gonna be writing copy for a radio commercial. Now, this is uh, different than writing a script for like a TV commercial. It's not just, you know, a TV commercial without picture. Because you don't have those visuals to rely on, you really have to strategically use your words to paint a picture in the mind of the listener. Their imagination is the visuals. So use strong word choice, take advantage of sound effects, take advantage of music if you need it, and make sure you include some kind of call to action what it is that you want the customer to do. You always wanna close an ad with a call to action. So another reason I'm excited for this week is because it's uh, the first time we get to have kind of a guest speaker, if you will. So whenever we have these really specific type of assignments, I like to try and bring in someone who has real world experience in this field to give some tips and tricks on how to get the best writing for that specific medium. So here's Mary Williams with Co-op Media to talk to you about radio commercials. Hi, I'm Mary Williams and I am the station manager with Koloff Media. We have four radio stations and a digital company located in Cedar Falls. We're locally owned and operated. Um, I've been in media since about 1995 uh, with experience in cable and uh, as well as network television, billboard, and then 25 years in radio. I've stayed in radio because I absolutely love that you don't have to put pictures and you can be so creative uh, with your clients in, in their commercials. I use several different styles of commercials when I am writing copy and it all depends on really what my client is looking for. If they're looking to promote a sale or if they're looking to just grow their brand, which is probably the majority of ours is branding and uh, um, image just across the board. So here are the styles that I use. Uh, straight rip and read are really good if it's a sale or an event and you've got a lot of information that you need to get out there in a short amount of time. Always remember to keep a call to action and try to keep a tagline or something consistent throughout. If you do several of these, I have some clients that this is what they do and it's what they want to do. Um, so we try to keep the same music bed, the same voice, uh, the same tagline at the end. Um, so those are the straight rip and read commercials. In addition, um, customer endorsement or testimonials are amazing. For branding these, this is word of mouth, optimized, and spread by our transmitter. So these are really, really great. I really prefer to record an interview style and then edit and get it down to 30 or 60 seconds. Oftentimes it's a 60, um, but then I really like to have my clients close those ads out with the call to action, hey, come see me, that type of thing. Um, with these, I just feel like when you script them, they lose some of their emotion, they lose some of the connection. Most people can't read uh, without sounding like they're reading. So having it be uh, more natural is, uh, I think, sounds a whole lot better. Client voice is another one that we do a lot of at Koloff Media. Uh, I really, really like to take the recorder, record my client or have them come into the station, interview style again if it's for branding an image. They're telling their story, sharing why they started their business, what they want to do for the customer, things like that. That can be really compelling if they do it uh, interview style where I'm just asking questions. And again, it's raw emotion. It, it brings that part out and then we edit it down and take the best parts and all of that sort of thing. But if they're promoting a sale or an event or some specific thing, sometimes scripting is best, but if you script it for a client, you really, really need to coach them a lot and make sure that they understand the importance of rereading it, rereading it, rereading it, so they don't sound like they're reading. Um, and that's kind of the, you don't really want that to get a, across. And you also really want to make sure that they're smiling. Uh, you can hear that in the, in the message on the radio if they're not. Um, and you just have to have the ability to do that um, if you're going to have the client read their ads. The cool thing though is clients almost always get feedback from people when they read their own commercials and do their own commercials, which can kind of help them uh, a lot with feeling good about something that otherwise is very intangible. 
live read announcer endorsements or, I'm sorry, live read, announcer ads, or endorsements can also be very, very effective. Studies show that people have a real connection to the announcers that they listen to on a regular basis. So there's that built-in level of trust. So if uh, Bob Westerman, our morning guy, is telling somebody, hey, you should go do this, chances are they're going to go do that. Um, the only thing that we have to be a little cautious of here is that we're not making it sound like an endorsement if it's a um, product category that we have a lot of um, competition. Uh, otherwise, we risk cancellations from the businesses that are not being endorsed, if that makes sense. But um, again, I think these shouldn't be scripted. The live reads even shouldn't always be scripted. I like bullet points to give the announcer f some freedom in, in what they choose and how they deliver that. It sounds more natural and they can work it in to their banter a little more easily. The last one that I use the majority of is um, the real life situation ads. Real life situation can be really fun. Um, they can sound really great. They can also sound horrible. The things that I really caution people on with this is make it sound real. Think it all the way through. Um, be aware of the purpose of the ad um, before you start writing. And in the end, how do you want the listener to feel or how do you want them to react? Use caution when you choose the style because when you hear ones that are bad, it's because the people doing the characters in that real life situation are saying things that people would never really say. If, uh, if I say to a coworker, hey, I'm getting hungry, what are you doing for lunch? Okay, that's real, I might say that. They're going, they might respond, nah, I think I'm gonna go to Amigos. It's been sounding kind of good lately. And I might say, oh, huh, haven't been there for a while, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're not going to respond and say, oh, I'm going to Amigos in San Martin in Waterloo where they have two for one margaritas and the best fajitas in town. No, they don't. They're never going to say that. So don't write your commercial that way. You don't want it to sound, you don't want it to sound scripted. That's the whole point of these. Um, is, is once the character becomes the announcer, it loses all credibility uh, in that message. Keep the characters in character all the way through the end and use an announcer at the end to give the details that people need to have, but that wouldn't be said in natural conversation. The other thing is very few people speak perfect English, so don't be afraid to use contractions and light slang. I mean, don't obviously want to go too far, but light slang that people would use in the normal flow of natural conversation. And if you're writing about an experience, use sound effects. Paint a picture with words. Invoke the emotion of the listener. Uh, most people do make purchases based on emotion, so um, don't, don't uh, stray away from pulling that out in the message. Music is not usually needed in the background unless it's appropriate for that ad. I usually choose sound effects that make sense for the scene that we're setting in. If it's an office, you've got office equipment running in the background. If it's a restaurant, you hear dishes, you hear people, you hear distant conversation. Um, if you're outside, you hear traffic or wind or birds or whatever. So just kind of keep those things in mind. It's got to be believable to be effective, So, but it's a great style. Um, and then I really like to use, again, the business owner to close the message with the call to action or a tagline. Um, uh, again, I think that can be good if, uh, if your business owner can do it with the uh, script uh, instead of the announcer, that is a great way to do it. If they can't, then using an announcer is probably best than these. Whatever message you use, just uh, whatever style of message you choose, have fun with it. Um, think about, would this be something that would compel you to go to that business? And that a lot of times will, um, will tell you whether or not it's gonna be a good commercial. Um, the other thing is write for a fifth grader. Sometimes people like to write with proper English in big words because it makes them sound more intelligent. The problem is you can really turn people off by doing that. Uh, not everybody has a college education. Um, not everybody is going to be able to understand what a word means and they're not going to take the time to go figure it out. So you don't want to disconnect with them in the message. So those are my thoughts with, uh, with and, and I hope it helps, my, my tips, if you will, um, for copywriting. And I wish you all the best in this amazing career.
thank you, Mary, for that advice. Uh, that was very helpful. Hopefully you guys got uh, some uh, inspiration on how to do your assignment for a radio commercial. Now for your writing tip of the week, I think is a great one to use for writing radio commercials. And that's to remember that short sentences are powerful. The longer a sentence goes on, the more it loses steam. So if you can get to your point quickly and concisely, it'll resonate more with your listener or your viewer. So keep it short. Short sentences are powerful. All right, so that's all I have for you guys this week. I look forward to reading your radio commercials. I will be timing them, so make sure you hit that time limit. And I will see you next time.